Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Stuart. Good evening, everyone. And we have Amy. Hey, all. So, we're looking at doing a bit of a quieter one this week, and settling on a few random subjects, more than sort of one big one. So, we are mostly going to be focusing on sci-fi gaming, but I've annoyed Stuart, and I forced him to read a Star Wars conspiracy. Conspiracy theory type thing, retcon thing. <laughs> Very retcon. Yeah, it's 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 effectively the definition of retconning the retcon out of the retcon. It's it's yeah, it's the sort of thing where people read way too much into the story and then go, ha oh, ha! All of a sudden, this makes sense, and BS the BS in order to sort of overcome it. Personally, I don't agree with the the <laughs> scenario, but it's an interesting thought. So. We'll, we'll cover that as well. But I think first up, we should do sci-fi gaming. Yeah, and do you sci-fi gaming, it's like gaming and sci-fi are actually really synonymous. Like, if you look back at the very early years of gaming, the, one of the first original games was Space Invaders. No, 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 no. It was Pong. <laughs> yeah, Pong as and Pong was the original. Yeah. Said and, one of Pong, the originals. And, and, and Pong is... Two Star Destroyers and the Millennium Falcon trying to get away. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> but no, in all, in all seriousness, Space Invaders is, is the godfather of, of sci-fi in, in gaming. Yeah, exactly. It, it really is. Um... And then you, you move forward. Uh, you've got Quake, you've got Unreal Tournament. Don't get me started on how many different Star Wars games there are. There's uh... a lot. <laughs> There's a crap ton of Halo. Yeah, um, Halo, Mass Effect. What's the f- uh, what was the first sci-fi game you can remember playing? Ah, uh, first one for me. First probably, big one. First big one. Probably Star Wars Rogue Squadron on sixty-four, Nintendo sixty-four. Yeah, for me it was a PC game actually. Back when. PCs cost a million dollars. My dad worked for the government, and he got a heap of hand-me-downs. Um, nice. Which I immediately pulled apart and destroyed. <laughs> yep. And then, and then he got another set of hand-me-downs, which I didn't pull apart and destroy. Because <laughs> if I did that, he would have killed me. He damn near killed me the first time. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we have two people in chat room. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining us. If you have a comment and want to contribute, we will read it out on the air for you. Um, just figure hey, out. Hey, Dragon. Hey, Flan. And that'd be right. You both, you both know Amy. A- yeah. Amy, the only person that actually brings listeners to the podcast. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, I- I've been playing Old Republic as well. Yeah. Um, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Yeah, I had that. I love that oh, game. I love the Jedi, the, the um, the Jedi Knight series. Did Especially you, um, probably did my you... favorite Star Wars game series is actually the Dark Forces series with Karl Katarn. Yeah. Did you like um, the one of the one of my favorite cheat codes from Jedi Academy? Is there is no spoon. <laughs> Greatest <laughs> Matrix reference ever. Oh. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah Dead Space. Uh, the first sort of sci-fi game I can remember playing, and I can't remember what this was called. It was against my brother on the PC, and there was one planet in the middle, or a star or something, and you were you were a spaceship each. And you're orbiting around it in sort of opposite directions. And the whole point was to shoot each other and blow each other up. Sounds like a weird version of Galaga. It's it's really weird. And um, it's, it's top down. There's a circle thing in the middle. And both ships, you can sort of thrust forwards like in asteroids. And spin around and shoot like in asteroids. But you're actually orbiting the planet. And the faster you go, you can do all sorts of like crazy shenanigans. If you go out the edge of the screen, you come on sort of from the other, back in from the opposite side. So yeah, but yeah, that definitely sounds like it, was, it sounds. I, I don't think it is Gallagher, but it sounds very similar to Gallagher. No, I don't think it's Gallagher. 
No, no. but it's probably, it's probably some really cheap and nasty Gallagher clone. Probably, there's yeah. always there's a whole bunch of those. One of my favorite games, and it wasn't on a console. Yep. That was sci-fi. It, it was Star Wars, but it was in an arcade, and Ooh. you go in and you got to like, and you got it was a big old like a cockpit, and um. And you basically got to like do like the Death Star trench, the Battle of Hoth and stuff, and, and, and with like a like a joystick and everything. It was like, and I was like a kid at the time, and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Nice. Like now, you, like you full on gotta go like start off like shoot Tie Fighters, then go into the trench, dodge Vader shooting you, and then blow up the Death Star as Luke. Yeah, one of the um, sci-fi games I remember playing. It's one of the earliest games I remember playing. Was I think it was called. Cyber Drive? Cyber Dine? Cyber, cyber something? I don't think it's Cyber Dine unless it's something Terminator related. No, it's not It's not Cyber Dine. Uh, it's Cyber... I'm pretty sure it's Cyber something. And... Oh, Siberia. That's right, Siberia. Does Starbound count as a sci-fi game? Well, yeah, I'll go, I'll go Starbound. Yeah, what I'd is, go with that. What is Kill, Crush and Destroy? It's an RTS from years and years and years ago. Yeah, sorry, Kill Crash and Destroy was just mentioned in the chat. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, and it was sort of a Metal Gear Solid cross sci-fi game, and there was this one section where you had to listen to a guy enter a code. So it was do 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 do. It's four things. We I had to go into the sound files in the game and specifically listen to the sounds that were played. To work out what the code was to get past that door. <laughs> yeah, that I, sounds like painful. Because if you get the wrong code, it releases gas and you die, and you've got to go back to the start of the level and start again from scratch. Work all your way up to that point, enter the wrong code, die, back to the but, start of the level. Yeah, that does not sound fun. And I was just like, Ugh. yeah, and then yeah, I stopped playing it. Kill, crush, and destroy was 1997. Yes. Wow, that's that is way back in the day. Oh, it got, a re it got a re-release in 2012. That's, that's Stargate SG-1 starting territory. Yeah. That is a long time ago. Yeah, let's just say, like, it was, it was aeons ago. Yeah. I think one of the longest-running um, sci-fi games that's still going now has to be the StarCraft series. Yeah, StarCraft, like, definitely. definitely. Like, they've got, the, they've got the new expansion coming out um, November 10th. Nice. Uh, for StarCraft 2, which is Legacy of the Void. I've, Which is I've got uh, StarCraft 2, but I haven't really played it. Yeah, it's focusing um more on the um um I don't know my StarCraft. I know the two other races. Other, it's not the humans. It's not the Terrans. It's not the Zerg. It's the other one. George, like, the George <laughs> race. <laughs> the George race. I'm I ain't gonna cop so much flack from my friends if they ever listen to this because I because they okay. all play it. Protoss, okay. yes, the Protoss. There it is. Protoss. It's a, it's basically the the um the Protoss getting their um planet back from um home planet back from the um void. Nice. Beings. Nice. Yeah. Now, thinking of sci-fi games, I sunk years and years into a very specific sci-fi game. I've talked about it on and off on the podcast, which is sci-fi, um, Star Wars: Empire at War. Yeah. I so I actually started getting back into that again recently. Oh, cool. You know, so. it was a really funny sci-fi game uh, back on the PlayStation One, Age Odyssey. Oh, Age Odyssey! <laughs> making, <Yo>. making, <laughs> making, yeah. And the the, the fuck. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, yeah. That hey. game was why, hard as why, dicks. Why, why, why. That game was so fucking hard. <laughs> it was so much fun, but it was so stupid. I know. <laughs> the, the, the the killing the guards was hilarious. One of the games I never actually finished, and I'm sort of disappointed that I never finished, was Digimon World 3. Oh god, I hated the Digimon Nef World games. Never released in Australia, and it was totally unlike all the other Digimon games. It might have been Digimon World 2. <laughs> anyway, it was one of the Digimon World games. And <laughs> it was sort of halfway between Digimon and Pokemon. Yeah, it was really weird. It was Although, really it is Japan, weird. so... <laughs> really weird. It was released in America, it was never released here, so I got it from a friend yeah. and played it to death we got all the way <laughs> up to or... we got it all the way up to sort of mega evolutions and all that sort of stuff and um so we mega evolution what was it? it was i think i had like 
Because you can, it's effectively like a Final Fantasy type game where you've got three of your mobs versus three enemy mobs, and you sort of fight against each other, sort of t- in a turn-based sort of battle. Yeah, it was really, we- it was a really bizarre thing. But it was really bizarre. that's Japan. They love their RPGs in Japan. Exactly. And that was. Really I mean, you, you look at what they've, what, at what ca- well, what's come out of Japan when it comes to RPGs. You've you've got obviously the big ones, Final Fantasy. Exactly. Um, speaking of RP- other RPGs that I played way too much of, Zoids Legacy. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to mention that. Those Zoids games I played to death because those who know me know that I love Zoids. And I'm unapologetic about that. I let I let Scarecrow get away with his Gundam loving just so I can get away with my Zoid loving. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Gundam loving, um, Dynasty Warriors... Di- um, there was a Dynasty Warriors game where it was all Gundams. Ooh, Nice. It was on the. I think Xbox. he owns it. That yeah, wouldn't so. surprise me for a Price. second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was like the combat style of um, of um, Dynasty Warriors, but with Gundams, and in space. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think I have it here. Oh god. It's, <laughs> it's Hawks. That shouldn't surprise so, me. Sp- speaking of sci-fi RPGs, I'm <laughs> playing. I'm currently um playing through um Xenoblade Chronicles. Xenoblade's nice. been um. A staple uh, RPG that Nintendo has had for years and years and years now. There's a new one coming out for the Wii U in a couple of months. Do you remember playing Pod Racer on 64? Yes. God, I love Pod Racer on 64. Yeah. I was annoyed at it as well. <laughs> like, I remember how long it used to take to enter the code in to unlock all the different bullshit. It's like, beep, you had to press like oh, 30 you did fucking the cheap, buttons. You did the cheap way. I did the. I did the. I worked my butt off to. Oh no, we 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 did that. Me and my it was me and my brother. We were playing multiplayer. We always played multiplayer, and we did. We worked our butts off to have the best gear, but yeah. when it came to versing each other, because the console was in his room, he would cheat. So he would unlock the unlock all the codes, make his ship go really fast, and then I'd come in, and he'd say, "I've already got it set up for you." Okay, and he was gone. Yeah, it's like, father. Yeah, it's like, how the hell? He's like, like oh, I'm going to reset this. He's like, no, no, don't reset it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I haven't changed anything. I'm going to reset it. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Reset. So, I don't want to play with you anymore. And he'd switch <laughs> it off and switch the TV off and just, like, kick me out of his room. I'm like, well, fuck you, too. <laughs> well, it's his own so, fault. So, yeah. It's actually funny, because I'm getting the um the Darth Vader um, PlayStation, the PS4. Nice. With the new Battlefront. We actually get four Star Wars games, like, four old Star Wars games with it. Ooh. So we get um Super Star Wars, which is like old the old NES Star Wars. Nice. Uh we get a uh, Pod Racer Revenge. Nice. Uh we get Jedi Starfighter, which I actually found really cool really fun game. Yeah. And then <laughs> the one I'm actually really liked and I've played a lot of Wait, with, like, Jedi Starfighter, that's the fighter simulator, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I had modded years ago? Must have you been had... that game. It was, but you were flying an F three hundred two around <laughs> the around the Daedalus and fighting off wraith darts. That would be hilarious to see. Oh yeah, it was. It was. It used the models from the Star Wars Empire at War: Force of Corruption, um, the Stargate mod that I was working on for that. Stargate Empire at War, hilariously enough, yeah. and swapped out all the all the different particles and stuff because apparently the two model engines were compatible or something. And yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah, and the other game we get is um the Django Fett game for the PlayStation 2, which was really cool. Nice. So the thing I find funny about Django Fett is he gets eaten by a hole in the ground. No, 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 no. Django gets on... his head chopped off by Mace Windu. Oh yeah, my bad. I always get Django and Boba backwards, and it's Stuart's job. It is his full time unpaid position to correct me. <laughs> yeah, he yeah he he made the sake of bringing a gun to a sword fight. Yeah, that poor bastard. So, um, what other st- like? So if we I go s- to like mo- to more modern day stuff, Titanfall is a big one. Oh, yeah, Titanfall was brilliant. Destiny. Yeah, Destiny. Destiny, Destiny Battle- was great up yeah. until the point where you had to grind for a day uh, just yeah. to get half the mats for a level. You could grind for a month and level up twice. I was just like, no, fuck it, I'm done. I'm yeah. not wasting months playing this thing twenty four hours a day just to level up twice. So I haven't played that in ages. Yeah, we got a new Battlefront's coming out in a few months as well, so... Sweet. Um, 
Because that, that was being done by um, DICE. Nice. I was just thinking, because I, again, I do lots of modding, so, well, I used to do lots of modding, so I used to be in and out of all the different games. Probably the, my favourite, because I'm, I'm a strategy person, more than anything else, more than a first yeah. person shooter. I love Halo, love it to death, but I'm still a strategy person at heart. So, Sins of a Solar Empire. Mmm, oh my god. One oh, of my hell, hell, favourite going... games of all time. Actually, hell, if we're going strategy, um, Command and Conquer. Yeah, Command and Conquer. There, there, there's the old school. The Tiberian Wars. Yeah. Um, oh, one of my favourite mods for Sins of the Solar Empire adds the Star Trek ships into it. Mm. And I remember building a fleet of about two dozen Federation ships, bringing them all in right on top of the Borg base, getting wrecked. Yeah. Lost almost <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it was like this whole fleet of like I built up a massive fleet brought all of my fleets from all of my worlds knowing that this was the last Borg stronghold in my quadrant and if I could knock it out I could force them back to their sector and then I'd have a whole quadrant to play with and I was like yep okay and I'd just send everything I've got so I moved them all to the planet next to it waited ages until I was at my build limit and just sat them there and then I said okay enough's enough in they go Sent the wall of it. It's like fifteen sovereign class, dozens of everything, and didn't work. Oh no! It it, it failed catastrophically. <laughs> it did, did very badly. I lost everything. I was like, I had overwhelming firepower. What? If, totally screwed because I had uh, the whole plan was distract the ships in orbit and slowly but surely sweep around the planet, annihilate all their main structures, and draw the main forces, and then send my bombing ships that bomb the surface of the planet and neutralise the population in to neutralise the planet itself and then you could sort of get away pull back out of that system and then attack it at your leisure because they can't rebuild anything there unless they retake the planet the main fleet of ships totally ignored me destroying everything around the planet and just focused on my bombers off of the, that were bombing the surface of the planet and yeah. I for some reason didn't notice because there was just so much shit going on I was focused on doing so much other stuff that by the time that I realised that my bombers were being attacked, most of them were destroyed or crippled. At which point I was like, oh, shit. All of my guys are on the wrong side of the planet. There's no way that I could possibly try and save this. Oh, well, I'll just clean the slate of all their ships in, of all their, their shit in orbit, and then just try and hold the space around there. And so I managed to wipe out all their stuff in space, lost the bomber, the, the guys popping the surface cells, rebuilding more of them and just holding the space around the planet. And that's when the Klingons attacked. Yeah. <laughs> it's Klingons on the starboard bow. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, there, at which point I got totally wrecked. Totally <laughs> wrecked. And they wiped out my entire fleet before I could sort of claim the planet, and then because I had literally nothing left, they steamrolled about five planets before I could build up enough of the of a defense to push them back, and yeah, doing it badly. And it badly for all involved. <laughs> oh. just, uh, I was thinking of um, more modern day sci fi's, and two jumped into my head that were really awesome yep. uh, Star Citizen and um, Elite Dangerous. What's Elite Dangerous? Both of them are, um, uh, they're both very similar to each other. They're both, um, you control your, a ship, so it's like you control it from the cockpit. And you go around like doing missions and stuff, like um, like resource missions or killing stuff, and like you you get more ships and like you make your ship better and stuff. But it's all like first person ships. Like you, you your view of of the world is from your cockpit. Nice, um, Dragon. Do you have a link to that? John Tron is currently doing a mini series about the old Star Wars games. Whoever that is, don't know who that is. He's a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber. Okay, go to the YouTubes and tell him we send him the love. <laughs> oh, she's going to grab it. That works. Excellent. That'll make it easier. I'd just have to read it out over the, the interwebs. But yeah, probably um, one of the, the game series that really sort of freaked me had to have been um, the Dead Space 1 and 2. Dead they... Space 1 and 2? Yeah, we sort of skipped past Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. It's your fault for not paying attention. <laughs> I did bring them up. They were brought up. They're in the past now. We've moved on. 
At this point, it's less about us talking about sci-fi games and more of us trying to remember as many as we can. <laughs> it's sort of become the contest. It's like, how many can I remember over the yeah. years? Does Conker's Bad Fur Day count as sci-fi? <laughs> counts as fun. <laughs> counts know. as one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> Even by modern standards, that, uh, that game was like 20 years ahead of its time. My mum never ever wanted me to play Caucus Bad Fur Day. <laughs> she hated it. Nice. She thought it was going to get bad matches from Caucus Bad Fur Day. Because oh. of the, the swearing squirrel. Oh, that squirrel, <laughs> your death. Oh man, that is a great game all around. I can laugh. I can look back and laugh at it now. Uh, the giant ball, balls of brass are polished to the nth degree. Oh no, that's exactly what I did. A big ball, uh, a big British boiled br brass boiled boiler. I don't, I don't. My brain can't word the sentence, but it's funny. You got those little fire imp guys, and then they, they it falls over, and they they sort of defeat it, falls over. And it's like it's like, oh no, we can't go out the front way. We'll have to take the back entrance. Yeah, yeah. not <laughs> the back entrance. Hey, wait, what does this button do? No, don't push that. Um, warning. Warning, self-destruct in one second. Oh, you stupid! <laughs> Boys at IIL. Yeah. What about Imperium? Oh wow, I forgot about Imperium. No, I'll blame Stuart for getting about it because I didn't know about it. Yeah, oh, Imperium is old. Just I. You want to know a game that you have forgotten, and you're gonna hate me. You're gonna hate me as soon as I mention it for you forgetting it. Just, just say it. Fallout. Eh. Sure. Fallout. See, I'm not much of an RPG person. I'm more of an RTS person, so... I'm the Fallout, The Fallout games never really sort of grabbed me I've, that much. I grew, I grew up on RPGs. I've loved RPGs. Yeah. Um, it's just, if I, if, I, if, I, if, I, like, if I get bored of everything, I'll just go back to an RPG and be happy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Oh, you know it was a really um funny um sci-fi game I played. Yep. It was a really bizarre one. It was a Star Wars game on the PlayStation One. It was, it was to do with the Phantom Menace. Yeah. But you got it play as different Jedi. Ooh. So you had Obi Wan and Qui Gon. But then it gets then you had other ones. You got um and they all and this is where it gets. Interesting, because they all didn't have blue and green lightsabers. Ooh, that's that's cool. Yeah, you got to um, there was two others. One was a had a red, and these are all Jedi. Had a red lightsaber and an orange lightsaber. Uh, Jedi shouldn't have red lightsabers. <laughs> yeah, I that's, know. That should be your first sign that someone were right there. <laughs> yeah, but it was um, really interesting. I mean, for just real quick recap. JonTron's YouTube channel is youtube.com slash user slash j-o-n-t-r-o-n-s-h-o-w. Uh, if you, you should be able to find the videos on there. Also, when it comes to Imperion, Grin, one of the other Safe Sci-Fi admins, is currently doing a YouTube series highlighting different people's work in Imperion. So if you have something cool that you want to show off, uh, let us know on the Facebook page, and we will more than happily show it off for you so let us know yes anyway um still trying to think of other sci-fi games like there's tons of them so many I'm just trying i'm trying to just trying to think yeah we try not to think about the doctor who games just what? like we try not to think about the stargate games um, just try not to think about the star trek game the oh recent star trek legacy yes the recent one, no, the recent one. I mean, like the, the oh, the, the the one that's just called Star Trek. Yeah, and it's yeah, just, just a flat up shooter. The the Rooster Teeth guys doing a let's play on that. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. Star Trek Legacy. If you want to fly a starship around in almost three dimensional flight, it doesn't. You can't do loop to loops, but for the most part, it's all right. Get Star Trek Legacy. There's mods out there, left, right, and center. You can fly hard tacks. You can fly wraith ships. There's Aurora class ships. There's all sorts of Stargate stuff in it. There's all sorts of Star Wars stuff in it. One of the battles I saw online had the Battlestar Galactica versus a Galaxy class versus a Hatak versus um, I think it was a Star Destroyer. Did I say Star Destroyer? 
Star Destroyer, Galaxy Class, Gal- Galactica, and Hatak. Yeah, 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 those four. And they're all sort of flying around, shooting at each other. It was done really well. So uh, I thought of a. It's. I don't know if it counts as a true sci-fi game because it didn't really start sci-fi. Um, Jack and Dax. Um, Jack and Daxter. Oh, I don't know. I haven't actually played it. I know Ratchet and Clank is definitely sci-fi. Yeah, that's definitely sci-fi. <laughs> but Jack, because it doesn't start off with sci-fi, but then two and three are based in the future. We've got like laser weapons and 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 stuff. So. Yeah, well, Conker's Bad Fur Day is start does not start off as sci-fi. It's a. It's yeah. a He's a drunk squirrel that talks to a scarecrow and gets the scarecrow high on helium, which is hilarious. And don't get tired on the but drunk it, poo. But it, but it finishes on an, with, with an alien spoof and the <laughs> Matrix spoof, so... Yeah. Yeah, if, if Conker's Bad Food is sci-fi, then you could definitely say that the other one's sci-fi as well. What about some of the Marvel superhero games? Oh yeah, there's been a bunch of those over the years, hasn't, hasn't there? I wonder why. Transformer games? Oh. Some, <laughs> some of them have been good and some of them really I haven't. haven't. Yeah. You know what I forgot to mention? Bioshock. Oh! I blame you for forgetting that, but then I give you credit for remembering it so they sort of cancel each other out. <laughs> yeah, and um, one game that I'm really looking forward to coming out this year is um, No Man's Sky. Yeah, that looks interesting. So what for those for those what? who don't know what No Man's Sky is, it is a open world uh, game that is going to be on the PC and the PS4. Boo! Where, no Xbox. <laughs> well, it was originally it was originally a, a PlayStation PS4 um, only until they expanded it. Yeah. But um, you fly. You, it's open world, and you fly around the different planets, um, sort of studying them and stuff. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be really good. And it's gigantic. Okay, how about this? Is Ark Survival Evolved sci-fi? Mm, yes. Uh, it's, it's... Can't ask me, I haven't played it. It's sort of sci-fi-ish, kind of. Well, okay, you've got an implant in your arm, you've been dropped in the middle of nowhere. There's giant floaty pillar things. There's... That you can summon brood mother, but... Yeah, and, a, and later on there'll be other things you can summon from them. Yeah. There's also um, all sorts of different random extinct species, and it's 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 a good game. I enjoy it. You know what game we haven't mentioned, and we're gonna kick each other for it? FTL. Okay, that too. The Half-Life <laughs> Half series. Oh. Like how there's... can we forget the Half-Life series? Yeah. Gravity Gun. <laughs> Gravity Gun. Oh God bless the God bless you, um, Steam for making that. God bless you, Valve for making that glorious game. Yes. That glorious, glorious game, and hurry up and give us Half Life Three. <laughs> How about Kerbal Space Program? Yes, Kerbals. That's brilliant. Do you know there's a TARDIS mod for that? Yes. You can fly a TARDIS. This is buzz around the planets. Sort of... <laughs> and the good thing is that the thrust on it's so hilariously broken that you can just park. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what else we forgot? Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. Oh, that's because it's Warhammer. I know, but there's still a lot of sci-fi in, in, in Oh, it. you want to know what game we did forget? Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> oh, no, I was about to get to AVP. Yeah. It's a game that you could forget, except for the statue that it came with is fucking spectacular. Yeah. So, I've got the statue, I don't have the game and anymore. And the new one's kind of eh. Yeah. Which is Alien Isolation. It's like, meh. Yeah. Oh. I think we run out of games. Like, Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, definitely sci-fi. How many oh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z time... would you like? Well, no, because that one specifically focuses on time travel and, yeah. and keeping the, the timelines intact, so... Yeah, exactly. Oh, it, it just really, really, really quickly. Since we mentioned Dragon Ball, I have to go there. Dragon Ball Super. What the hell? <laughs> I was wondering when the rant was going to come. Oh, it's coming. Seriously, I I watch Dragon Ball Z all the time. I watch Dragon Ball Z abridged all the time. How could something made today look like such horseshit compared to something that was made 20 years ago? Like, I've seen animes from the 80s that look better than Dragon Ball Super. Yes, the animation is technically smoother, but the quality of the drawing is rubbish. I can't stand it. It's the first Dragon Ball Z I haven't been able to watch. 
I can watch Dragon Ball GT. And I can tolerate Dragon Ball GT. I can't tolerate Super. <laughs> if that doesn't underline how much that show annoys me, nothing will. So, yeah. It's just very, 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 very annoying. Yeah. Yeah, we covered Command and Conquer already. Oh yeah, we we did we did the Tib- Tiberian stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we we sort of ignored Warhammer because it's tabletop and doesn't really count. No, no, the games. Shh. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're reading the we're reading the chat room again. I don't. Even, how do you say that name, Amy? Just, are we just gonna go with Fland? Fland, Fland dogs. Yeah. Hard. My brain's not working. I had a crappy day at work. Yeah. It's so, Fland. Yeah, Fland. We'll go with Fland. Ha ha, I win. Yeah, Fland's talking about tabletop games and we're just like, whatever. He's not a pie. <laughs> mm, pie. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about again? Fland's name. Um, he called him a Flan. Yeah. He added a D to it. He's not a pie. Let's see. Um, um, no, I haven't heard of limit theory. Yeah, I'm just doing a look at it. Um, look at it now. Yeah. Stuart, do the thing. Yeah, it actually had um, it actually had a Kickstarter. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's an RPG, RTS, and sandbox space exploration game all in one. Yeah, that sounds like one of those games that tries to do too much and ends badly. Although it got um 187,000 on um Kickstarter, so. That's impressive. It's not bad for a game on Kickstarter. It really isn't. Okay. Um, any other games you want to mention before we move on? Uh, I'm just trying to think if I've, got, if, I've gone through, if I've missed anything major. Oh, Zoids on GameCube. Probably one of the best Zoids games ever. It <laughs> disappoints me that there is no Zoids game that compared to the Zoids versus games on GameCube. Uh, Would you that... count Sonic as a sci-fi? No. It, uh, it gets no. W- it gets weird, I know. Yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah. It's because good. of all the space stuff. We'll go with no. Okay, that's fine. To be uh, safer? Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. What about yeah. Mario? <laughs> Mario Galaxy. Well, there is two Mario Galaxy games, so. Yeah, no. Just no. <laughs> no. Flat out no. Mario and Sonic, not sci-fi. No. I'm sorry, Nintendo, oh, Sega, you hell. can keep them. Hell, 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 while we're keeping on Nintendo and sci-fi, Star Fox. Oh! Damn! Since we've got a new one coming out, since we've got a new one coming out in a few months as well. That is a really good point. What about 007, specifically GoldenEye? Would Gold- that be sci-fi? Because GoldenEye and... Um, Golden Gun. GoldenEye on 64 is probably one of my favourite yeah. shooters. The Golden Gun that that pissed and, off um, so many people. Yeah. Is it Dark? Was it, what was the other one they had on there? Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark. I don't know Dark in the name. Perfect Dark was also another brilliant shooter on the 64. Oh, the 64. How much time I wasted on you as growing oh up? Oh my god. I, 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 lost, I lost count of how many hours I had on, I used on the 64. <laughs> study? What is this study that you speak of? So, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter was pretty good on 64. I loved Rogue Squadron on 64. Yeah, it was, was it Rogue Squadron on 64? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember what it was called. I just went with X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. <laughs> yeah, no, Rogue yeah. Squadron was awesome. Wasn't 2... The, 2 and 3 were kind of meh. Yeah, 2 and 3 were kind of meh. But the original was glorious. Okay, let's move on to... The Star Wars... Thing that I uh, fine. <laughs> well, we're we're running out of games, and the chat isn't helping by naming more. So, <laughs> yeah, moving along to this really stupid theory about what the Death Star was really for. Yeah. Now, all caveats aside, seriously, we none of us support this hypothesis. So theory or whatever the word you want to use to describe it. Um, we just thought it was intriguing enough to mention. Well, I thought it was intriguing enough to mention. And Stuart's like, no, 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 no. I, that's... 
So everything about this is wrong on so many levels. Yeah. So and, the, the, I can, and I can point out why as well. It's not just biased because I'm because I cosplay Jedi. It's yeah. Biased. There's a reason why I'm saying no. Yeah. So the way it goes is, did the Emperor create the Death Stars to fight to hold off the invasion? Oh, did he create the Death Star and institute a, the Empire and go full military sort of hyper doctrine in order to fight off the invasion of the whatever what were they called? The Yuuzhan Vong. Yeah, that's them, the Vong. Um, well, I'll do a bit of backstory on, on um what they are. Yep. For people that don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. So the Yuuzhan uh, the Yuuzhan Vong um it was a book series. That w that was written by Timothy Zahn, who's an aw awesome author that I've met many times. Yep. Uh, is, the, is these um, al uh, I can't I guess they are aliens because there's a lot of aliens in this, but they're a species that are resistant to the Force. So that's sort of a Force neutral species. Yeah, so. and this is at the time when when Luke had had the new Jedi Order up and yep. running. So they did an invasion. And basically, they d could do nothing against... Like, Luke and his Jedi could do nothing against them. And the, it, the casualties on, 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 the, um, on the Republic side... Because this is when there was the New Republic. Um, it, just got, it just got absolutely decimated. Yeah. Like, Coruscant got, got um, terraformed. Yeah. Like they actually had to become, they actually had to change from the New Republic to the Galactic Alliance. Yes, the term Galactic actually came back. Yeah, uh, and it's yeah, it's sort of the those guys were like brutally OP. Yeah, they were, like they made Luke. They they would they made they would make Yoda look look powerless to them. Yeah, and they're sort of they're effectively the R.I. of the Star Wars universe. Would be one way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah, 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 the the Yasilamar, Yasilamiri. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, the 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 general premise is that the um, the emperor was stupidly powerful with the force and really good at sort of seeing the future, and he saw this invasion coming a long time ago. So he set the pieces in motion in order to set to build the Death Star and the Star Crusher, and. A massive fleet of Star Destroyers, Super Star Destroyers, and the Eclipse, and get them all in a position so that when this invasion did happen, the hyper -militar militarized galaxy could stand a chance, effectively, against this invasion. That's the general premise of the the um, the theory, anyway. <laughs> there's a there's a few bit there's a few bits and pieces scattered around. Like the 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 reason that it the the plan failed is because he dramatically underestimated Luke, and yeah. Yeah, but the reason this wouldn't work at all is there's a few things that, that stand out to me. Yep. One, I don't think Palpatine was that strong in the Force to see that far ahead. Sure, he was absolutely strong. Oh, he was brutal. He, he could hold Yoda, which is... Yeah. Come on, he's Yoda. But if Yoda couldn't, and if Yoda couldn't sense it, then... what? Then. Yeah. That, that well, makes... it is said that the dark side is better at seeing the future than the light, and the dark side does cloud the light's ability to see the see future. The future. True. So there is that. But then it gets to the part of of everything else. He was never play. He was, the whole him taking over was never to stop an invasion. It was because he was a Sith and he was taking out the Jedi. Exactly. It was a Sith taking out the Jedi, and he wanted power. Yeah. That was it. If he turned around to the Jedi and said, look, there's a big-ass invasion coming, I'm doing this to stop that, I'm just doing it by any means necessary, ultimately, you guys are in the way, so I've got to get you out of the way, then it just wouldn't be a fun movie. No. And then there comes the whole Death Star plans. Like, they were planning the Death Star, like, in Episode 2. You yeah, could, there was the rumours plans... of it in Episode 1. Yeah, there's rumors of episode one. You saw the, you saw the plans in episode two, because Dooku yeah. um, got them from the um, G from the Geonosian general. Exactly, and there's that's roughly when it's sort of been redconned for the prototype Death Star to have been built. Is yeah. then, 
So, and the prototype Death Star, according to the expanded universe, which is what this fan theory falls into, yeah, does and the Star Crusher don't su- Star Crusher Sun Crusher whatever the hell it's called does doesn't the Sun get dest- Crusher yeah Sun Crusher doesn't get destroyed until much 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 later yeah way later like it's so. way beyond that yeah well remember ex- this actually leads to another fan hypothesis that Stuart probably knows. The, did you, didn't you know the Death Star, the destruction of the original Death Star was an inside job? Yeah. <laughs> I love after, this theory. After I love all... this theory. After all, exhaust ports push out. They don't suck in. Yeah. That's why they're called exhaust. So obviously there was some wizardry involved in that. There's actually a couple of really funny videos. There's one which is done up like a full-on 9-11 style conspiracy nut video. And there's another one that's done up, which is like the the engineer guy that made the Death Star. So I say, come on, seriously, guys, it's an exhaust port. I I think I did pretty good to make it as small as it was to begin with. And let's be honest, who would think that a bunch of crazy space wizards was attempt to attack this thing and blow it up? <laughs> so, an exhaust port's push out. What are the odds of something turning ninety degrees and going straight <laughs> down and zigging? through this mind-boggling complicated tunnel and detonating the core. Seriously, what are the odds? <laughs> there's Honestly. also there's also one other thing about the um, the whole Death Star, um, the Empire being uh, um, preparing for the invasion. That, that I know you're going to laugh at what I say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Stormtroopers couldn't shoot them for shit. Yeah, Stormtroopers couldn't hit the broad side of the barn from the inside... With their guns pressed against the wall. And then the red shirts would still die. Yeah. <laughs> like, you really have no love for the red shirts, do you? <laughs> nope. No one no one has love for red shirts. They're red shirts, that's what they do. It's like the, the one of the greatest pictures I've greatest memes I've seen is that it's the picture of the billboard and it says, Come and come and get a red shirt with all of us and Captain Kirk strictly below it going, Do you want the wall to die? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Kirk, don't do the thing. I'm gonna do the thing. <laughs> but yeah, just I, I, I just <laughs> only Imperial soldiers are so precise. Yeah, so precise and missing. Yeah, and thus the greatest lie in the history of movies was it was said. After all, we've already covered on the podcast a while ago that it wasn't stormtroopers that made those blasts, but it was actually a fet. Specifically. Boba. Boba. Just making sure I got it right. <laughs> that's 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 another one of the fan theories which I find highly amusing. Well, the CL one's a lot more plausible as well, so... Yeah. That, that one's... one's just plausible. This one's just like, just like, nah. Yeah. He I walks thought... OP. <laughs> he, walks... Uh... Hey, just rem- just remember... Just, just remember this. At the at the end of the Battle of Endor, what happened to all the meat and the helmets? What was everyone eating? Ooh, meat is yummy. Ewoks are cannibals. Everyone was eating the dead stormtroopers. Hmm. I was gonna say I don't really want to know. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, see, I'm just gonna call Ewoks furlings and be done with it. Furlings. Shout out to all my Stargate fans. <laughs> hey, <y'all. laughs> <laughs> you expect oh, uh, Dragon won't talk to in games anymore. Oh yeah, Portal. Totally forgot about the Portal games. Yeah, we're not doing games anymore. We've moved on. We've actually got two announcements we're going to make. One before the news and one after the news. So first up, the podcast is moving. It will no longer be recorded between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. live on uh, Queensland time, but it will be moved to 9 o'clock in the morning Tuesday, which is 7 o'clock at night, I think, for the States. Around that time, yeah. So So, basically we're making it uh, friendlier for our American uh, friends. Yeah, exactly. So that way uh, we can get more people on and do lots more fun with it. It's not going to happen straight away. It's still a couple of weeks off. Uh, but it will happen, so probably from episode fifty onwards, or fifty, fifty or fifty-two. I haven't decided exactly when. <laughs> whenever we do, whenever we do the uh, the fun uh, podcast. Yeah, whenever, whenever we do the 
the, the fun podcast. <laughs> um, so, what have you got in the way of news this week? I know it's been a fairly sort of slow week. But... Uh, there's a couple of things, a couple of funny things. But oh, okay. before, before the news, I'd like to do a quick shout out. Oh, shout out time. Yeah, I'd like to do a quick shout out to uh, Inner Dimension. Oh, yes, this podcast is brought to you by Inner Dimension. Brought to you by Kasha, I think. Kasha Gornick uh, Fawcett, I think it is. I have no idea. I just we'll look at that name that. and it's like, wow, there's there's either not enough, there's not enough vowels or someone bought too many consonants. <laughs> <laughs> either way, something's not right here. But yeah, uh, basically, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Kasha, we love she's you. The crea- she's the creator of it, so. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we love you. Inner Dimension's one of the partner series with Save Sci-Fi, so seriously, jump on, um, what's it on? It's on Vimeo? Vimeo, v- yeah. Vimeo? And I'll check it the, out. It's I'll it's with yeah. I'll put it, the link in uh, the chat. The chat. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's it's actually it's actually really good. We covered it on the podcast a while ago. Just remember, it is a web series and it is made on a very small budget. So for, please be a little bit forgiving. But other than that, it is really good and definitely worth watching. Jump over to their Facebook page, give them a like, and tell them we send them the love. Yep. So yeah, uh, news. There were, as I said, a couple of funny stories. Yep. Um, so, uh, there's a really funny thing with, um, Seth Myers um, over oh. the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, to promote Star Wars, J.J. Abrams sent him a real lightsaber. For those who can't see me, I did the fingers, the, the rotation the, fingers. The air quotes for radio. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's re- and, and, and it's the really The first funny. thing he does is chop a bookcase in half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He thought it was a fake, though. He was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, he sort of looks at it confused. He's like, what just happened? And then he immediately turns around and tries it on the blinds and but takes yeah, the just, blinds out. It's like, yeah, like the oh. window is blind. And then the, um, the assistant come, comes in and it's like, oh, I think we're going to need a new blind. He went, you know, just just make a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we you, you sort of see, because he pops his head out and talks to the assistant and then closes the door. And you just see in the background through the sort of the very clouded out... Um, <laughs> Door. door. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's moving... really funny. It's definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Marvel. So a, a video has come out sort of explaining uh, where we're up to at the moment with it, it... with the Infinity Stones and the Infinity Gauntlet. Also up today. on Save Sci-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, that's just on the uh, Facebook page. I think we've covered that like four times on the podcast because we're all sort of so looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Since we're officially in phase three. Yeah. Uh, I'll mention the enemy fleet. Um, no, no, no. Leave that? Okay. We'll leave that. We're going to cover the enemy fleet. Um, next week's podcast is going to be a Doctor Who slash Oz Comic Con special, where we sort of recap Oz Comic Con and we cover the new, the starting of the new series of Doctor Who. And the week after that, we're going to do a whole podcast dedicated to the fan voted ships and fleets and. All that sort of stuff. We're going to sort of sit down and nut out who would actually win in a full-on conflict between these two fleets. So, should oh. be fun. Yeah. So we'll move along to the next one, and this I love. I love this story. There was a R two D two themed jet that was unveiled in Seattle. Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. I I love that. Just I want to fly that. Yeah, Actually, Stuart, you don't have a pilot's license. I know. Um, and I'm pretty sure just walking and, and remote control R two D two in and saying R two do the thing won't actually result in anything useful. Yeah. Uh, moving along, um, uh, the Mopra telescope needs our support. Yeah. Um, that's the the Australian government, being the the anti science dicks they are at the moment, um, have cancelled all the funding for a lot of telescopes, and this one is mapping out a lot of the galactic nebulas and stuff like that in the Delta Quadrant. Um, and it's really hard to sort of map those areas when you're not in the Southern Hemisphere, and they're the only one doing it. They've got a Kickstarter up at the moment where they're doing all sorts of cool giveaway, well, giveaways, so to speak, uh, for different donations. So we're sort of scouring the world and trying to get as many people into it as we can, because we need to send them the love and make sure they finish this brilliant work. Sorry, a little bit of a sciencey rant. <laughs> I love, I love the telescopes. Radio telescopes are awesome, and what they're doing is spectacular. One of the things that you can win is you actually win a, a nebula. Because when they discover nebulas, they can name them. 
They're going to name them after you. You get to name and own a nebula. How fucking awesome is that? <laughs> Technically, you won't like own it. Own it. You can't go there and throw out all of the native species and say, I own this shit because Earth rules and you suck. But for the most part, on paper, you do. Which is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So moving along to a little bit of Flash and Arrow news. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Flash and Arrow news. I like it. So yeah, uh, we'll go with, we'll go with uh, Flash first, and there's a new uh, little teaser that came out. Yep. And it sort of shows off um, Edge as um, I've got to remember his character now. Zoom? Adam? No, no, he's not Zoom. <laughs> they do talk a lot about Zoom. Okay. But well, that's, explains... that's why I'm confused. Yeah, no, they they um, talk about Zoom like why at um Edge like Edge's character. I think he's like Adam Breaker. I think it is. Yeah. Is there and he's like, cause Zoom wants me to kill you. Like he actually says Zoom. So I'm like, ooh, we actually get mention of him. And it shows Jay and Jay talking about um when the wormhole the wormhole at the end of season one happened. It opened the way to multiple worlds. Nice. So we're getting a lot of the the um Earth two stuff. Nice. So really looking forward to that coming back. Oh yeah. Hurry, hurry, hurry up, October. I'm honestly not looking forward to Arrow coming back. I thought they ended that where it ended was was brilliant. Oh, then you're gonna hate the news I'm gonna tell them. I know, I know. I, I've already read the news. Remember, I posted it. <laughs> so, uh, the season four trailer shows a ring, and there's a lot of speculation that Oliver is gonna propose to Felicity. Yeah, and it shows them living in a in a house in the, the suburbs. And it's just like, no, guys, why? 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 There's so, nothing yeah. good. It's like, I'm... Nothing good could come from another season of Arrow. I would have been happy if they ended Arrow and just focused on the Flash? other... Spin no, not, not Flash, the other series. Um, Le Legends, Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. They shifted Arrow. No more Arrow. It's all Legends of Tomorrow. I would be happy with that. That, 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 that would... Would have been a nice ending to that series, and moving straight into Legends of the Tomorrow would have been a brilliant way to change it up. So that's just me bitching again. Yeah, and um, uh, speaking with um, of our uh, Legends of Tomorrow, um, Katie Cassidy did an interview recently and um, uh, confer uh, or said that she would like to do lo a lot of crossovers with Legends. So who was she again? Uh, Black Canary. Black Canary. Oh yes, not not the kick-ass Black Canary. <laughs> yeah, the not Sarah. The, the new Black Canary. Yeah, she's Laurel. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I... And this is something I. Oh, you go. What? I was I was just gonna mention the uh, the Star Wars stamps that I want. Oh, the Star Wars stamps. You and your skin Star Wars stamps. So yeah. uh... United Kingdom uh, Royal Mail is issuing 18 special stamps next month. I might be able to get you a copy of those through my friends in the, in the UK. I have... My aunt lives in England, so... Yep, well, saves me a lot of effort. <laughs> oh, my job here is done. I'll just call my aunt and say, like, uh, Aunt Angela, can you get me these stamps? <laughs> the only way that could be funny is she's like, is she agrees and then uses those stamps to send you the, an empty envelope <laughs> over. No. <laughs> so yeah, all the um, all the stamps. Yep. Um, is there's a, the, uh, there's um, not um, so so far is uh, Darth Vader. And Yoda, isn't it? Oh no, there's a whole bunch. Like this is all of them. Okay. Yeah, so it's Darth Vader, Yoda, old um, Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Stormtrooper. Yep. Uh, Han. Yeah. Han, Han Solo, Leia, Luke, Palpatine. Please Luke, tell me the one with Luke is Luke kissing his sister. No. Oh. <laughs> no, it's just sort of Luke. Please Luke. tell me they're posed like that so you can do the thing because that'd be hilarious. <laughs> like, no. It's, it's like it's one of one of these Luke kissing nothing, one of these Han Solo kissing <laughs> nothing, thing. and then you've got Leia kissing the opposite yeah. side. So you could either pair Luke and Leia up or Han and Leia up, depending <laughs> on how creepy you want to be. Yeah, and um, and then um, Palpatine and uh, well, as, as that, Sidious and that would, that would be funny, Palpatine kissing one way and Sidious kissing the other. <laughs> yeah, 
Then we yeah. get to I just heard, I just broke Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we get to the last of them, which are three from the new movies. We have Finn, Ray, and a Kylo Ren stamp. Oh, nice. And the Kylo uh, the Kylo Ren's just awesome. Very nice. I want his lightsaber. You they can't want... have it. Yes, I can. I can order a saber forge. They have a template that you can get one. <laughs> you can't have his exactly. No, I know. Just, just, just you let him try. He he will. <laughs> I will find a way to get it. So this is an interesting little rumor. That the Star Wars, that Star Wars Force Awakens is going to have a post credit um, after credit scene. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh what? yeah. By the way, this goes out to all our friends in America. Ha 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 ha. We, we get, get it, it today. First. We ha, get ha, it today. Yeah. We get it today before America. Yeah. Although the Brits Children. get it before us. No, they don't. Do we get we get it before the we get it before everybody. It airs here first. Just oh yeah, no, just to. It airs yeah, here first, the and then the, the, the Brits good. get it about ten hours after we do because of the time delay. Yeah. And then the Americans get it about another ten hours after that. So. The only ones that get it before us are the Kiwis. God yeah. Damn. God damn it. Yeah. I wonder how many frequent so, fly yeah, points um... I have. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the. Um, There's also rumors of a Star Wars cruise that is going to be sitting on the international dateline, so they can watch it like yeah, I know. before literally everybody else. Yeah. But... Um. So they claim that the uh, this comes from um Schmoes no, uh, um saying that the post credit scene will actually be Rogue One. Nice. So, and uh, a little bit of really interesting news I found today is that Mark Hamill had a fall while they were filming Episode Eight and almost killed himself. Ow? <laughs> That's not a good thing. How the hell did he pull that off? Uh, they were climbing, um, because it's being filmed on an island. Oh, God. <laughs> and they were climbing something and he slipped. Uh, what is it with the old... Are we yeah, well, reaching that point where all of the people from our childhood hero movies are dying of old age? Or yeah. r- crashing a plane? What or is- having a door land on them? Or falling off a mountain. Well, no, no, this is funny, because the first movie, it was Harrison Ford. Now it's Mark Hamill. Does that mean Carrie Fisher's going to be gonna, uh, gonna be the third one? Yeah, the, the issue is that she won't bounce back. <laughs> no. Well, disasters do come in threes. Yeah. Yeah, supposedly. Well, I guess there is three of us, so... <laughs> and some really funny news, and I know you're going to find this hilarious... Hilarious. Um, according to the f- uh, folks over at MovieMistakes.com, Jurassic World is, is named the most mistake-ridden summer movie of 2015, with 18 errors in it. Wow. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are 18 documented errors, and, and one of them was like, it is, it is physically impossible for a woman or anyone else to sprint cross-country and engage in all manner of strenuous panic-driven activity while wearing four-inch high heels. Yeah, <laughs> we noted that one a while ago. Yeah, we did. We we, we already knew about that. Okay. Anyway, we're running down to the last. Oh, sorry, sort of it's now two up to minutes. nineteen. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we run down to the last sort of twenty. Sorry, two minutes or so. I almost said twenty minutes. Lol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. We, yep. Just so, watch so me. Flat is like, just watch me. <laughs> do it if you want to run around Oz Comic Con in high heels and your Star Wars gear. Seriously, do it. Nah worth it. <laughs> Do it on okay. your knees. Anyway, so we've actually, speaking hey. of Oz Comic Con, really, really quickly, <laughs> we've got some fairly decent news about that. There is a chance that we will be getting to interview for um, some people from Oz Comic Con. Keep an eye on the Facebook page for more details. As soon as we know anything, we'll let you guys know. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for tonight's podcast. Thank you for joining us. As always, you can catch up with us on facebook.com slash save sci-fi on youtube.com slash I have no idea what the YouTube address is or save sci-fi.com is it just save sci-fi? it might be it, I'm pretty sure it is but I'm not willing to do that in case it goes to the wrong place and then I get in trouble so okay. anyway bye all yep see ya have fun and remember as soon as we know who we're interviewing you guys get to put questions up on uh, save sci-fi so make sure you pay close attention to that is there anything we forgot to do it? No, I think we're good. Alright, cool. Oh yeah, really quickly, keep an eye on Garrison 7. 
Rumor has it something spectacular is going to happen over there in the next couple of days. Not allowed to say anything beyond that. So, has fun we and we'll see you next time. We might know, but we don't know. Oh, but we don't know. Oh, but we don't know. Oh, but we don't know.